What is up, everybody? I hope you guys are all having a great day. Every once in a while, there are pieces of news that come out that really make me want to kind of de- kind of do a deep dive on them. Today certainly was uh, a little bit dealing in that. Uh, we've talked many times on this channel, and Darren and I on our podcast have talked about kind of the convergence of many different facets that are going to be dealing in distributed ledger technology, uh, digital identity, artificial intelligence, Internet of Things, um, crypto, kind of tying everybody into the same system, right? And today certainly, uh, you know, made me take a step back and look at, you know, kind of what's being built. So I don't want to get too tinfoil hatty in this video, but I'm just going to present to you kind of, you know, once you see announcements like this, and these are... This announcement today was not like a hypey announcement or anything like that. It was just an initiative that was going on between a group of organizations, one of which is Hedera Hashgraph. You start digging a little bit deeper into it, and and, you know a picture starts being formulated, at least in my head, as I start to dig into some of these organizations and the implications of all of this. Uh, Now, if it's done in a in a trustworthy manner, uh, as far as digital identity is concerned, I I don't know. I, I I hope that it would be. You know, maybe maybe it will end up empowering um, empowering people to to have custody of their own of their own data in a way that we have never seen before. Um, but I don't know. It's just it's almost like at what point for me, and this is just me again. It's almost like at what point does the innovation kind of outweigh the moral aspects of the innovation innovation itself? Um, but I'll let you guys make your own decisions of it. This is not me saying anything bad about anybody. I'm just. Um, you know, I certainly, uh, I certainly love Hedera Hashgraph and the whole uh, Hedera community, um, and I think it's amazing technology. Uh, it's just, you know, you start digging into this stuff and you kind of start formulating your own opinions about potentially where it could go and if things were to go wrong, what it would look like. So um, this came out today. This is Operator Tokenomics and, and Respectful Personal Data Brokering. So let me read that again. Respectful Personal Data Brokering, Okay. Imagine a world where Alice enters a retail store, Acme. She's on record as agreeing to share her data with Acme, and the store is able to detect her presence through her mobile device. When Alice buys items using her phone, Acme rewards her by depositing Acme coin into her associated cryptocurrency wallet because Acme's systems are integrated with a respectful data brokerage ecosystem. All of Alice's interactions, identity data, and consents generate uh, generate auditable proof of the company's rights to collect, use, and share her data. And she can change her mind anytime about those rights. The ecosystem preserves and enhances the relationship between Acme and Alice and their mutual value exchange. Now pay attention to the companies involved. This is consulting company Dojo Partners. And this is what I talked about kind of deep diving into this stuff. Um, going to all of these websites and seeing what all of these organizations are doing. Consulting company Dojo Partners recently debuted just such a scenario to key stakeholders at GSMA, and we'll see who GSMA is in a second as well, their Mobile World Congress in Barcelona under the headline Operator Tokenomics. Now, Forge Rock is another organization playing a role in this. They have an innovation lab team working with Dojo. Uh, a consent service pro- blockchain provider, which is called Privacy Co-op, Hedera Hashgraph, and a privacy solution provider, Priv, and a pilot program as part of the GSMA foundry. All right, <clears throat> it's a lot of heavy words in there, a lot of n- names of organizations. So let's start with what GSMA is. GSMA, now again, this is all dealing in quote-unquote Respectful personal data brokering. Um, you can make uh, any assumptions you want to in, as far as what that would look like. GSMA is the global system for mobile communications. Okay, They are a giant. We saw also in that release, this was part of the GSMA Foundry initiative. right? So the global system for mobile communications, Foundry projects. Now, what are those Foundry projects right now besides this personal data brokering? 5G autonomous drones. 5G MM Wave, 5G Transformation Hub, Always On Network Service, uh, Edge Cloud, Exploring New Commercial Applications, Standard Essential Patent Tool. Okay, great. But yeah, a lot of 5G talk in here. Uh, About GSMA, 
They're a global organization unifying the mob mobile ecosystem to discover, develop, and deliver innovative or innovation foundational to positive business environments and societal change. And the board is, I mean, about the heaviest hitters you could ever think of, right? You've got uh, Telefonica, you've got Verizon, obviously GSMA, AT&T, uh, China Mobile, China Telecom, Deutsche Telekom. I mean, I can, I, I can keep going down here and running the gambit because it is pretty much all of the telecommunications heavy hitters in the world. Um, Vodafone. I do believe NTT Data uh, is certainly a member of uh, GSMA as well. Now, I went into Priv. So we saw Priv as well. Privacy solution provider Priv, right? This is on their main page here. Um, and it talks about this personal, personal data lifecycle management platform. Extrapolating that out, privacy co-op. Uh, co and... They're phrasing this around cryptocurrency based on uh, human rights. Dojo was mentioned, a different kind of consulting company, creating new growth for the new normal. I'll just let this play for a second. <clears throat> so certainly tying um, quite a lot of different technologies into this discussion, obviously, artificial limbs with this heart being shown right here. How are we a different kind of consulting company? We're building platforms and solutions and emerging technologies that are shaping the next wave of enterprise value. So certainly NFTs play a role in that virtual reality, um, kind of the cloud model. Technology artists, so scanning and sizing of, uh, of individuals. Virtual mannequins that you can probably model after yourself, um, which sounds really cool, right? But kind of think about kind of where that goes. Um, taking radical steps to create new enterprise value. Cloud first and metaverse friendly. And it's talking about the digital user. And then tying off from the digital user, it's talking about living data. I wonder what living data is. Um, certainly health records, certainly kind of the moves that you're making on a daily basis if you quote unquote approve it. Um, but even in the Warren article, it was like, or right in the announcement here, if Alice chooses to uh, give give that data away and she can change her mind at any time. Well, once your data's out there, I mean, it's out there, right? Once you're tied in and that data is out there and you're giving it away to another organization, and you choose to turn that right off for that organization to utilize your data, do you think that your data goes away completely from that database or do you think that it's still maintained? I mean, it's just, I don't know. This The, the whole thing for me is just a lot. The digital wallet is the face of the operator or the digital wall wallet is the face of operator tokenomics and coin is the currency. So, and this is Forge Rock, AI driven identity. So artificial intelligence driven identity for the modern enterprise, help people do their best work with fast, easy, and safe, to, safe access apps, services, blah, blah, blah. Forge Rock has a ton of stuff going on. Um, I'm pretty sure they're tied into like government solutions as well. Uh, this is a website that would probably take a few hours to dive into. Um, but these smaller announcements sometimes that, that aren't, that aren't garnered around a, a lot of hype. Um, that are talking about, you know, assets or organizations that we may be involved in. I would suggest if you find stuff like this, well, look at the other organizations involved and see what's actually being built. They're certainly tying artificial uh, intelligence in. This is 100% about digital identity. Um, regardless of, you know, I'm not talking nefarious means here. This stuff just kind of scares me a little bit. Um, even if it's done in the right way, it still scares me. I think it always will. But you know, I, I don't know. It's just, you could, you, we could go down the rabbit hole as much as we go down the rabbit hole here, but you know, we all do end up at some point in time getting tied into the same system. And regardless of how that occurs, in my opinion, it's going to be a phrased, it's going to be phrased around our rights and it's going to be the best thing for us to do as a society, the best thing for us to do as individuals. And I think that sometimes you kind of have to play devil's advocate and look at the other side of the coin and think about the implications of what's actually being fucking built. Um, and I don't know that maybe I'm looking too deeply into this. Maybe I'm not. Um, this is from NTT data though, certainly tied into these, uh, aspects. 
I'll, I'll give a shout out to Cl uh, Klaus on my uh, Patreon that shared this with me. Um, I'm only going to play about 20 seconds of this. Frank Crossetti will be the first person in the world to recover from an injury thanks to regenerative medicine. Later, the Nobel Prize for Medicine will be awarded to an artificial intelligence creation called Dinah. Dinah will be the one who cures the greatest enemy of humanity, cancer. It's Dinah's processing and deep learning that will find a cure for cancer by cross-referencing billions of online digital records, DNA samples, and healthcare data. All right, moving on. Uh, NTT data, certainly we've all seen this. I'm not going to try to be hypey and be like, Interledger Protocol XRP is used across the board, but NTT data, this that that video was 2019. This was 2017. Uh, I'm sure most of you have seen this. This is pretty much everything, every system being showed tied into RippleNet, Interledger Protocol, and the XLP is being the bridge of, of value across the board. Um, real quick, just kind of firestorming the, re the rest of this, but Biden, Biden did announce um, a ban on uh, oil imports today. So I'm curious to see what happens as far as, uh, well, it says expect a gas price to spike, but gas price has, uh, I think in the U.S., hit all-time high. I saw uh, Anthony Pompliano posting about that today. I mean, we've already seen a spike, right? Uh, gold and silver as well. I think gold gold is like attacking all-time higher. It's damn close to it. Um, also, the Philippines to launch a pilot CD, uh, CBDC implementation. Now, this is like the third or fourth week in a row that we've seen a cryptocurrency executive order will be coming from the White House this week. But I, I think that it's getting to the point now that it, it, if I had to guess, I think that it probably will be coming out this week because of all of the uh, the major hitters out there news-wise that, that present this stuff. Um, I saw it from Forbes. I saw it from pretty much everybody else that said that it would be coming this week. So I'll make sure I'm staying on top of that. This was interesting. This came out today as well. This is why community banks should be moving on to crypto. Now, what's interesting to me about this is this is the chief innovation officer at Finastra. We do know that Finastra is uh, XRP enabled. Doesn't mean that they're going to be utilizing XRP, but it does mean that they have the capability for their clients to reach in and touch the ecosystem and use XRP if they choose to do so. Um, talks about the main reason citing for crypto uh, advocacy was that more Americans are taking interest into crypto. Uh, likely includes community bank customers, obviously. Uh, standard advice for community banks is to think big, start small, and eventually scale up. Uh, it's, you know, We do know that a lot of the technologies regarding crypto assets right now do provide more of a level playing field for these smaller banks, credit unions, community banks, where historically these banks are kind of at the mercy of what the big banks decide to do, all the tier ones and the tier two banks decide to do. So uh, starting point of getting educated, the lack of comprehensive regulatory framework presents an opportunity for community banks to try to influence on how the rules are crafted. And last but not least, inter uh, International Women's Day 2022. Uh, I am not a, um, I'm not the guy that normally is, you know, calling out um, things based on gender or I don't, I never talk about race because we're all the, we're all humans. Um, but I think that this is great. And I, I, I do know I saw something from Hedera in here that their, their foundation has an incubation arm out there for women that are trying to develop in this space. And we have seen, I think with the NFTs, especially, and don't get me wrong, there are a lot of insanely powerful women in this space and there should be. Um, I'd love to see more people come into the space across the board that can create and provide value. I think NFTs really did kind of spark a lot of creators within this space, but I, I've been in conversations with uh, Crypto Eddie as well, and obviously she is advocating for as many women to come into the space as possible to innovate. Um, and I think that we're only going, it's only going to be natural that as this space progresses that more and more people come into this space. I mean, look, a lot of women right now are running the finances of their households. A lot of women are CEOs of, you know, multiple Fortune 500 companies right now across the board. Uh, so shout out to all the strong females out there in this space. Uh, and I hope to see more of you guys come into the space and develop. And for the for the people that are in this space developing right now, kudos, because it takes a lot of guts to, to put your face out there, regardless of who you are, and, and to try to really provide content in a way that you feel is valuable. Um, yeah, I mean, that's about it. So again, paying attention to everything in this space. Uh, don't try to get too tinfoil hatty on you guys. But you know, when I see something and I think it's interesting, I'm going to present it. Um, and I'm not going to try to hype it up or provide rhetoric or do um, 
you know, some sort of a bullshit XRP attached to gold 10K per coin, uh, you know, YouTube video thumbnail, which I think is just the most asinine and stupid thing that I've seen in a long time. But I just saw that yesterday. So love you guys. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Bye.